and welcome. My name is Evgeny Rosakov and you're watching TVP World, interview from Vilnius. Criticism of the UN and one of its key institutions, the Security Council, has become noticeably more frequent. The main international organization of the planet is not coping well with the functions it was created to perform. To discuss the UN and its main goals and issues, we are joined today by the Associate Professor at European Humanities University and expert in public law, Ingrida Danielenia. Hello, Ingrida, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, uh, before we start our conversation about the UN, I guess it is worth emphasizing that before the UN, there was another organization, League of Nations, which was way smaller, uh, but had some similar tasks. So, could you please remind our viewers uh, what was this? What was this League of Nations about, and uh, why was this organization liquidated? Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, we have all probably heard of the phrase "never again." And although it mostly refers to to Holocaust, to the Second World War. Uh, I think the same logic uh, was relevant uh, since the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and uh, the League of Nations was an international organization that was founded in the wake of World War I. Uh, actually, it was established by the Treaty of Versailles, uh, which was the exact treaty that ended uh, the war. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as you correctly mentioned, uh, at the time when the League of Nations was founded, it was founded by 42 uh, states. states, original members, um, and, and it was founded with the same purpose, uh, to create a forum for discussion, to prevent conflicts before they happen, uh, to promote peace, security, uh, but also human rights, democracy, and international order. Well, as the practice showed, they didn't really succeed, did they? Uh, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, never again... Uh, didn't work out. Didn't work out. Yes, uh, and, and, and the League of Nations uh, was uh, dismissed uh, in 1946. <clears throat> uh, with the official explanation that, uh, unfortunately, it did not uh, prevent the Second World War. But, but if to look a bit deeper, it had other problems as well. So, so the League of Nations, at the time it was uh, dissolved, it, it was about 58 members, but um, during all this time, uh, during the time of its activity, USA was never part of the League of Nations. Let's not forget that Germany and Japan left League of Nations in 1933. Yes. And Italy uh, left this organization in 1937. Exactly. And then there was the situation with the former uh, Soviet Union, yeah. which was not admitted into the League of Nations in the very beginning. But then later, uh, it was uh, it became a member. Yeah. And then was expelled in 1939. And was expelled in 1939. Exactly. And, 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 and we all know that uh, following the Second World War, uh, USSR, uh, let's see, um, took care of its bad reputation in a way, if, if I may say, for, 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 for the time say. being, for say, the time sure. being, because it, it, it um, joined the Allies. And, and, and the question of its being a part of the international community arose again. And there was no, uh, you know, let's say, ethical or maybe, in a way, no proper possibility, perhaps, to readmit it after all that happened. So, so there are many reasons and many problems. Okay, so now UN. What was it created for and what are its main goals? Mm -hmm. Once again, never again. As the UN Charter clearly states, uh, after experiencing the devastating world wars, um, there was a need, once again, to have uh, a universal, global, international organization and provide a forum for all of these countries uh, to talk, to have a permanent, constant forum for all discussions, easy and difficult ones. And, and so, so the main aims is to promote and ensure peace, uh, security, 
also to ensure human rights, uh, promote social and economic development, uh, to ensure international order, um, rule of law, so all good aims. And there's my next question then. In early September, U.S. Ambassador to, uh, to the U.N., Linda Thomas-Greenfield, pledged to push for reform of the U.N.'s Security Council mm -hmm. uh, to better reflect current global realities and include more geographically diverse perspectives. So, how could this be done? Well, let's start with the main point that the United Nations was established, as we discussed, in 1946, right? Almost 80 years ago. Exactly, yes. Uh, and uh, the realities uh, that were true 80 years ago were such that, uh, you know, the, the world was divided. Uh, and and um, when it was created, the UN Charter focused on the de facto situation of those realities. The uh, provisions that regulate the activities of the United Nations, its uh, main bodies, such as the UN Security Council, were all based on uh, the realities of the 19, you know, 1946. 1946, okay. mid, after mid, the Second World War. Exactly. Uh, and, and what was the situation at the time? Uh, we had uh, five superpowers uh, that ensured their exceptional uh, role and exceptional status in the United Nations. Uh, and, and the UN Security Council, which is a body that participates in all decision, practically all important decision making. So in a way, the realities of the t today are no longer met by this um, uh, composition. And uh, let me just point out that during these almost 80 years, the UN Charter, the founding document that regulates the activities of the United Nations, was only changed three times. And this was done in 1965, 1971, and 1973. So, so the last change was very... Uh, old and those changes they they dealt with yes the uh, some additional uh, non permanent members of the UN Security Council uh, the expansion of members in the ICJ uh, in, in the International Court of Justice which is a body also of the United Nations and also the expansion of the non permanent members of the Economic and Social Council and that is all so uh, it doesn't mean that there were no Discussions and these discussions that are now um, highlighted and um, by 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 the U.S. Uh, ambassador to the U.N. They're not new, uh, and they're logical. And of course, uh, I think that they're welcome because uh, the, the logics. Uh, uh, deals with mostly two issues: uh, to 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 improve the representation. Uh, and uh, inclusivity uh, of, 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 of the UN's uh, Security Council, okay. its, its main body. It's good that you mentioned Security Council. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. My next question is actually about the uh, Security Council and about Russia mm -hmm. that we've already mentioned. So Russia is obviously a pain in the neck in that Security Council. Mm -hmm. How could other members of Security Council manage issues with Russia? Well, uh, a pain in the neck, I think, is a very polite way to... Exactly. To... I, was, I was choosing a, a, a right word for that for a very long time, trust me. Yes, uh, well, uh, because uh, Russia is... is uh, let's remind the viewers that Russia, yes, is a permanent member of the UN Security Council, one of five, and it is also currently a country aggressor engaged in a full-scale war. Uh, so, uh, having in mind the aims of the UN as an organization and also of the Security Council as its body, Russia is uh, more than a pain in the neck. It doesn't belong there, frankly. Uh, okay. it, it, it is something so, that so goes, it's a country that goes against the fundamentals of so the organization. Here's the question then, if, is there anything that can be done in this specific case? UN Security Council is not a homogeneous uh, body, right? And uh, we only refer to the five permanent members because they have the so-called veto power. Exactly. And each of these five countries has the power to veto any decision, resolution, 
uh, which, which they do, which they do, and in a way which then paralyzes the other procedures. Uh, apart from these five countries, we have ten more countries that rotate on on, on a two-year um, basis. But um, so, uh, apart from Russia, we have China, which which is also uh, exactly yes. uh, problematic, and we also have. Uh, from time to time in history, and, and this will probably be true tomorrow as well, in, in the near future as well, we have the USA. This means that their stance, their position is and will likely be very unexpected, in the, in the, at least in the upcoming four years. What can be done? Um, Expelling Russia? Is that, is that an option? Expelling any country... It was done in 1939 with the USSR mm -hmm. because of its aggression against Finland. Mm -hmm. So here's the question then. Could, could the UN do something similar in 2024, 25? So, so it's a complex question. Exactly. USSR was expelled from the League of Nations, uh, not the UN. No country was expelled so far from the United Nations. Uh, and uh, it is probably very unlikely that such, uh, step is going such to be a step taken. is like is will be taken. There is a possibility, and there are grounds for Russia's uh, expulsion. But uh, with all such important decisions, uh, the UN Charter requires uh, the two thirds of uh, votes in favor of such um, steps by in, the General in, Assembly. Okay, okay. Uh, but also the recommendation of the UN Security Council. Okay. And once again, we come back to the same uh, problem that no recommendation can be issued if at least one of the five uh, uh, permanent uh, members of the UN Security Council Uses object veto, to this. Visa veto, veto mm -hmm, power. Mm -hmm. Does not abstain from such decision, but looks uses like, veto looks power. Looks like we are a, a, a sort of a uh, cursed triangle here. There are some legal um, or quasi-legal possibilities. Uh, for example, there is a procedure called uh, as the acknowledgement of the credentials of the representatives of states or UN members. So when, uh, for example, Russia or any other country delegates representatives to act on its behalf, the UN has different steps. The credentials committee and then uh, there's a possibility of a vote uh, at the General Assembly to deny such credentials. And by denying credentials of um, representatives, concrete persons, uh, such a country may then be in a situation where de facto it is no longer represented. Okay. And such instances are known, but, but with regard to Russia, once again, we come back to the fact that there's probably no consensus with And there's probably to no political will to do that. No political will. Okay, so in general, UN as an organization, briefly, does it have to be reformed? Well, let's come back to the main point. What is UN? What, what are United the United Nations. Nations? What are the United... It's an international organization. Currently, it has 193 members. Being an international organization, it does not operate in a vacuum. Uh, its decisions are adopted based on the will and the decisions uh, and the needs of the member states. Now, if you look deeper into what those states are, or let's say apply the criterion of uh, democracy, I mean, how many democratic states do we have within the UN? Different experts, they uh, identify about 20, 30 countries that could be called true demo truly democratic, and then um, uh, about 60 that are maybe at fault. This is the situation in the world today. And even if we were to form an international organization, how do we convince the countries of the world to sign up to, you know, different uh, maybe rules? Well, or uh, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I don't think there's much that we can do personally, me mm -hmm. or you, but, uh, well, at least we talk about this. And, mm -hmm. this, is, and this is important, I, I think. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you so much for joining us today, and I really hope to see you once again. Thank you for having me. And I would like to remind our viewers that our guest for today was an associate professor at European Humanities University and expert in public law, Ingrida Danielenia. You're watching TVP World. Stay with us.